I'm John Muir Laws. I'm a scientist and an explorer and your host for the Nature Journal Connection. Today I want to share with you a technique that I use just about every time I go exploring that helps me be a better observer and more curious. It's a way of thinking about whatever I see and it starts by focusing my observation. If I just stare at something I'm gonna miss really important details. So here's the trick. I find something that's interesting so for instance, right here, I found this little, this little cone from a, one of the, the trees that's around me. And if I want to notice more details about it, what I do is to just start by saying my observations out loud. The trick here is out loud. Now, an observation is anything that if I can start a sentence saying, I notice, right? That's an observation. So all the things that I notice. So if I look at this, I might just start saying, all right, I notice that this is broken up into to little plates. They're little interconnecting plates, like, like, a, like a little puzzle here. Um, each one has a bump in the middle of it. And let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've lost count. It's going to have to come up with a better system of counting, but more than 10 of these plates. The outside edges of them have these. So you see what I'm doing here is I'm just saying anything I notice, I say it out loud. So if you see something, say something. You can try this with any object that you find around the house or in the natural environment where you are. So go pick up a piece of fruit, pick up a vegetable from your refrigerator, grab a house plant. If you're outside, grab a leaf, grab a cone, some object, and just start this. What we're going to do is for the next minute, I want you just to try to make a stream of consciousness riff of observations off whatever natural object you've found. And what you're going to find is partway through this, you kind of slow down. You're going to be like, I'm out. I don't know what else to say. At that moment, you actually haven't run out of observations and things that you could notice. What's happened is that your brain has just gotten a little bit distracted. So just when that happens, if you slow down, just go back to like, oh, I'm just making observations and just say, I notice and just say the next little thing. It doesn't have to be a big deal, but anything that you can observe, anything you see, just say that about what uh, the object that's in your hands. All right, let's pause the video and give it a try right now. Now you're ready for part two. We call this I wonder. When I'm doing my I wonders, I'm going to try to get myself to be more curious about whatever object I've found. So I am going to start to ask questions about what I see. I hold up my object and I say to myself, like, hmm, I've, if this is like a cone, there are seeds inside of it. I wonder how many seeds something like this can produce. I wonder if the, actually I just saw something. Oh, look, I just found what I think. I wonder if these little dark flakes that are coming out of it, I wonder if those are seeds. Oh, that's cool. So I've just, I've just made a little collection of, of, of seeds here. I wonder how many are in this. They don't seem very big. They seem to be very flattened. So they don't, they're not like pine seeds that I'm used to seeing. They're more they're more like little chips. Could those be something other than seeds? It's always good to kind of have an alternate explanation for what you're seeing. All right. So I wonder if if every of every one of these little cones that is out here has has the same general shapes and the same number of little plates, or if that is something that is variable between cones. I, I wonder if, so if you get stuck with your I wonders, a really good trick is to try the who, what, where, when, how, why prompts. And you can just sort of say, how, like, um, 
when, okay, let's try when. So I start looking at this and I start thinking when. So when, so when did this fall? How long ago did this, this, this fall? When does it open up? Does it open up when it's on the tree? Does it open up when it hits the ground? Does it open up after it's been on the ground for a little while? If I played with, with, um, with how questions, all right, um, how does it pop apart? My, my little cone has these big cracks in it. What forces it to pop apart? So whatever prompt I use, that's going to stimulate more questions in my head. Sometimes questions will naturally come to you, and that's great. When they do, I say those out loud as well. But sometimes I have to make the questions come. Very often, the first questions are not the most interesting ones. But I want to get the easy questions out of the way because sometimes the really cool questions are the questions that are kind of hiding behind the other questions. So I'll just start with whatever questions can come to my head. And the more you work at this, the better you'll get. Try this now with the object that you're looking at. Let's shut off the video and see how many questions you can come up with in about a minute. Now we're ready for the third and final step. It's called, it reminds me of. When I do my it reminds me ofs, what I do is I say out loud any connection that I can make with the object that I'm looking at and, well, anything else that I can remember. So as I look at this, I say, well, it reminds me of puzzle pieces. It reminds me of, it reminds me of the honeycomb of, of a bee. It reminds me of one of the robots on Star Wars. It reminds me of a little nose sticking out in the middle of each one of these. It reminds me of a shield that uh, a knight or a Viking might, might carry. It reminds me, it reminds me of the Grand Canyon. It reminds me of cracks in the mud. You see what I'm doing is anything that is a connection in my head. I want to say those it reminds me of out loud. Very often, hidden in your it reminds me of's are really interesting ideas, really interesting connections between this object that we're looking at and other things that we have learned or other things we've seen and experienced. The more that we can network those together, we end up with a really interesting way of playing with ideas, playing with our observations. When you make interesting it reminds me of's, they often stimulate you to ask other questions or perhaps to make more observations. You say, it reminds me of this. A natural kind of follow-up to that is, why does it remind me of this? In what way is it similar to that? In what way is it different? So let's try this now. With the object that you're holding, pause the video, and in one minute, see how many it reminds me of's you can come up with from looking at this object. So remember, you're using words, pictures, and numbers to record, I notice, that's all your observations. I wonder, every question you can think of, and it reminds me of, the connections that you make. They all come together on the journal page. The journal is where those two come together. Words, pictures, numbers, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. We interlock those together, and you've got a really powerful way of observing and documenting all of the processes that you're doing as a nature journaler and explorer. Our nature journaling project this week is to use this I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of system to create our own nature journal page. The page is going to begin with your observations. Any observation you make, that could be sights, sounds, smells, textures, shapes of an object, behaviors of things that are interacting with each other, anything that you observe, put that down on paper. And then the next observation, and then the next observation. You can use words, pictures, and numbers 
to document these observations in whatever way seems most appropriate to you. As these observations build, questions will often begin to naturally occur to you. And if this happens, write those questions down, either in a little list on the side of the paper, or you can put those questions right next to a part of a drawing that is showing the structure that you've got a question about. If questions don't naturally pop up in your head, you can try the who, what, where, when, how, and why system to try to prompt you to ask other sorts of questions. As these come to you, also put those down on your paper, one after another after another. Similarly, it reminds me of statements may occur to you. You might say like, oh, this looks like a, well, write that down. Again, either as a little list on the side of your paper, or you can put it right next to part of a drawing that shows that detail. You want to get a good combination of observations, questions, and connections, all dancing together on the same journal page. I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, is a wonderful system, and I apply it every time I go out and have an adventure and I go exploring. I see something new or something old. I apply this to it, and it helps my brain wrap around it in a really dynamic way. I then get that I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of down on my page. I use my words. I use my pictures. I use my numbers. And each one of those will help me document and record different aspects of what I see. The more I work at this, the better and better I'm going to get at it. All the skills of nature journaling. That goes from being able to notice things, being able to ask questions and make connections, to being able to draw what I see, or think of ideas of how could I quantify that? How could I find the numbers behind that? The more we work at this, the better it's going to get. I hope you had fun exploring your object with I notice I wonder it reminds me of. And what we're going to do is just take that system and kind of put it in your bag of tricks, put it in your quiver. And so the next time you go out into nature, the next time you're observing anything that you want to notice more details about, you can pull out this system, go, all right, let's do I notice I wonder it reminds me of. If I start with that, I'm guaranteed of finding something interesting, finding better questions, and being able to make the connections like a scientist. This is the Nature Journal Connection. I hope you had fun with us today, and I'll see you in the field. Doo -doo -doo.